So in this next video, we'll see how to create two parallel lists and how to maintain them. So in our previous example, we saw how to and create a list of colors. Of course, we saw how to write functions. Um, but what if we wanted to maintain a list of students' names and their corresponding scores? So for the student in the first position, the score in the first position has to be maintained so we don't mix and match them. So it's essentially a very rudimentary elementary database that you're maintaining with names and scores, which is what you're required to do for assignment number nine. Um, well, I will show you an example where we maintain a list of colors and some numbers that go with them. And so if you're looking for a particular color, how do you find the number associated with that? So lists have indices or subscripts that go with them. And all the lists that we have seen so far um, have a range. They start at zero and they go to how many ever number of elements you have in your list. So for example, let's start out by creating a list of colors. We'll call them, we'll call my list my colors equals, and let's have a list of colors. So I have red blue, green, and you can always append things to the list later, but let's say my list is set for right now. I have indigo, how about violet, yellow, maybe orange. So we just have a few colors. So there's my list. Let's have another list called my numbers. These numbers, let's say for some reason, are associated with each color. So for example, 12 goes with red, 23 goes with blue, 34 goes with green, 45 goes with indigo. So they are all associated, they are not random numbers. I have seven numbers and have seven colors. So they all need to match. So there is my list of colors and list of numbers that match the colors. And um, it's very it's a very abstract concept. There's really nothing that says that match them other than the fact that you know that you have to maintain the parallelism of these arrays. So there's nothing really that says these arrays are parallel other than the fact that when you are looking for red, you're going to find the corresponding number, which is at the same index position. So all indices or subscripts start at zero. So red has zero, blue has one, green has two, and so on and so forth. And likewise, 12 has zero, and 23 is one, and 34 is at the second position, and so on. So if we find the corresponding subscripts or those indices and match them, then we know we get the right uh, number. So let's say we are going to get a color to search for from the user. So you tell the user, please enter a color, and we will search for the corresponding number and output it to them. So there is the color input from the user. Now, how do we search in our list? So we're going to say for, we know this loop that we've been using. So let me add a comment here that says, search through my colors list to find colors list to find the color. Once we find the color, then we'll find the number. So for x in, range in how many numbers should we look for so we know we have three six seven elements in my list so i'm going to say 4x in range of seven that means starting with zero it's going to go zero one two three four five six um, seven numbers zero to six will give us seven numbers and what do we want to look for we're going to throw an if in there that says if um, my colors and this x is our index that we were talking about so it's going to start at zero so we're going to put that inside my square bracket and say if my colors of x equals this color variable that we read from the user so my colors of x being zero first is going to take red and compare it with the color that the user enters and if that is not the color it is going to go back to the for loop x is going to move on to the next index which is one so we go zero one two three and so on so my colors of one would be blue and if the user entered blue 
then this condition would be satisfied. And what do we want to do? We want to print, in this case at least, a couple of different things. We want to print my colors. I want to print the color. I want to print a space after that. And I want to print the numbers that go with it. So my numbers of x will give us the corresponding value of that color. So this x, which happens to be our index, is the key that ties everything together. So let's see how this works. Let's save this file. So we have pretty much everything here. We have two lists that we built. We read one particular color from the user. And then we go through our for loop and search for that particular color by using x as our index. So for x in range of 7 says go through 7 numbers for x being 0 first. And my colors of x says my colors of 0 equals this color. Then print that particular color and the corresponding number. If that's not the case, then we're going to go through the list. And we'll see what we can do if we don't find a color and things like that. So it says, please enter a color. Let's enter blue. And it says 23. Let's run it again. And it says, please enter a color. Let's do indigo. And it says 45. So now, that's part of it. What if we wanted to keep entering colors until the user says Q to quit? So you can just throw this whole thing in a loop here. So after you read the color, you're going to say while color not equal to the letter Q. You want to keep doing this whole thing. Go through my range and find the color and print it. Now, again, you have to remember that anytime you have a while loop, you need an update statement. Remember, we read the color one time outside and we check, is that equal to Q? If it is not, we do it. Well, in order to sustain the loop, we need to read the color one more time here. So you come here to that position and we copy that statement and say, Put it in here. So we read the color the next time. And based on that, we go back to our while loop and say, well, now they've entered the next color. Check if it is Q. If it is not Q, then go through and do the whole thing. So let's try that and see if we can do it. So red, it says, please enter a color. We can enter another color. And we can keep entering colors until we enter Q, at which point in time it quits. Now, one thing this program does not do that you can try in your program is what if I enter a color that is not there. So what if I enter pink? It simply says, please enter a color. It doesn't really give me an error message. So what you need is for this particular if, where we say if we find the color, do something, you will need to add an else after that here that says, what do you do if you don't find a color, which is what you would um, need to kind of also do for your assignment. If you find a name, you output the score. If you don't find the name, then what do you do? So this introduces, um, we have already done lists, but it talks about how to um, work with two lists, multiple lists. It's not just two. You can have another list that is parallel to this that will keep track of something else um, that goes with colors and numbers. So it shows you how to work with multiple lists and multiple parallel lists.